Okay, this video is explaining how to take your existing Excel template and um, update it to the chapter three and beyond. So we're gonna add 15 spaces in here. So we'll insert those. And then what, what this is going to be is gonna be our income statement where we're gonna have our um, sales not bold though. We're going to have our cost of goods sold. All right, I don't want all these to be bold. I'm going to have to, I'll highlight this whole side. Okay, um, cost of goods sold. Which equals our gross profit. Then we're going to have um, equity income and operating expenses. And that's gonna provide us with net income. Then we're gonna go down and I'll make this bold and we're gonna have our statement of retained earnings. And then here we'll have our beginning of the year retained earnings. We will have our net income, and I don't want these bold either, so let me highlight these cells. And then we'll have dividends paid, and that will provide us with our ending retained earnings. Okay, so then once you kind of have it set up, um, again, you'd have, you would input your values here. Um, I'm going to mostly just focus on the formulas. So I'm going to create a formula here for this gross profit line. So I would put in um, probably just a top and a bottom border because it's not my total um, finished total yet. And then push equal, and it's going to be your sales minus your cost of goods sold. Now, when I do that, I'm not going to enter my cost of goods sold as a negative number like the textbook um, shows us. So say if my sales were $5 million and my cost of goods sold were um, $3.5 million, I'm going to just type it in like that and see it's going to sum it up. Okay, then the equity income and your operating expenses will leave you with your net income. Now this is a final number, so I'll go ahead and do top and bottom border. And then I'll say, okay, it is my gross profit plus my equity income minus my operating expenses. And that's gonna give me my total. Now I can copy these, so I can take this and say copy and then paste it here and then paste it over my consolidated total. I can copy that, paste that there, and then paste that there. Um, and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna just fill in some numbers. So like let's just say the sub has fifteen hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand in costs. There's two hundred and fifty thousand of equity income, and then the the parent has. Um, 775 dollars in operating expenses. Okay, just, just to fill that in. So again, I'm not really tying it to any, to any problem. Then when we come over here to our total, my total here is going to be my parent plus my sub. It's a sales. So sales would normally be a credit balance. So a debit balance reduces it. So I'm going to subtract my debit column and a credit balance increases it. And I'm going to add my credit column. Now my cost of goods sold would be the reverse. So I'll hit the equal sign. It's my parent plus my sub, but since it's an expense, the debit column increases it and the credit column decreases it. And again, you don't have to worry about this for chapter three because we don't have any adjustments, but I would still do this. But I mean, there's gonna be no values in here, but when we get into chapter four and five and six, you can have um, different consolidating entries going into these. So you might as well set it up correctly from the start. And then our equity income, again, is an income account. So our parent plus our sub, the debit would make it smaller and the credit would make it bigger. 
So we'll add the, add the credit and subtract the debit. And then our operating expenses is the same as cost of goods sold. So it's the parent plus the sub. A debit makes it bigger, so I'll add the debit. Credit makes it smaller. I'll subtract the credit. Okay, so then I've created my total there. Then we'll come down to our statement of retained earnings. Um, and again, our beginning of the retained earnings, I'm going to just put in a value. Um, okay, then our ending retained earnings. So here again is going to be a formula. So I'll put in my uh, lines. And then I'll say, okay, this is equal to the beginning of the year plus the net income that rolls into it minus the dividends that get paid out of it. So that would be my total retained earnings. And then again, I'll make up some numbers over here. Oops, sorry. Okay, and then, and then this one, I can copy the formula over to there. And then I can also copy it over to here. Okay, now then with this formula, um, it is going to be the parent plus the sub. It's an equity account, so its normal balance would be a credit. So we're going to subtract the debit and add the credit. Now, you don't want to copy that down. This net income is different. So again, I'm going to, I'll make it just great at kind of, whoops, to just highlight it. But what we're going to do is it's going to roll from above. So we're going to take that equals and say it is equal to my net income. So whatever changes I put in here, they're automatically going to funnel down into my consolidated statement of retained earnings. Now, my dividends can be the parent plus the sub. They are normally a debit balance. You debit dividends paid and you credit cash. So a debit would increase it and a credit would decrease it. Okay, then the only other thing you want to do is then note that this is our ending retained earnings. So now when I come down to my balance sheet, this formula that we had from before is no longer in place. So I'm going to delete it and put an equal sign and go up and say it will be equal to my ending retained earnings and then push equals. Now it doesn't balance because I put in random numbers up at the top. So ideally though yours would balance at that point. So you just want to make sure that you've created this top part and that you've created those formulas just the way that I have told you and then that your ending retained earnings rolls down into your balance sheet.